Hello and welcome to lecture 4 of Bulk Body Aerodynamics. Today we're going to talk about uh, flow fields and forces on passenger cars. So we've built our fundamentals in the first part of the course and uh, introduced the tool that we'll be using to assess those in the hands-on labs, which is CFD. So now we can get into the details of the fluid mechanics around vehicles. So today we'll talk a little bit about the general flow features around cars, um, drag and its components, and uh, a little bit about non-drag forces and moments on cars. The key takeaway messages are that uh, separation and the associated pressure drag uh, that comes with it are the dominant flow feature around cars. But even given that, the, what we call a basic form drag, which is basically the, the clean shape of a car with no wheels or sort of protrusions poking out, it tends to have a pretty low drag coefficient. And we'll see what that means and like what, what does relatively low mean. We'll see that today. And additionally, uh, one gets contributions uh, from internal cooling flow, the wheels, the underbody of the vehicle, and these things all together essentially double the drag coefficient of that basic form. So flow around cars are dominated by separations. Cars are essentially bluff bodies um, and thus separated flow contributes a large portion of the drag and there's kind of 2D and 3D types of separations and we'll talk about both today. You also need to take in cooling air and this is important for the overall vehicle aerodynamics. And the effects of wind on the vehicle can also be pretty significant but at high speeds where the drag overall is most significant, the flow angles relative to the vehicle direction are typically quite small unless you're driving in some very unusual wind. So we're not going to focus on this. So first let's talk about the 2D separations. These are essentially separations caused by the presence of sharp edges. When those edges are perpendicular to the direction of flow, they cause a separation. And you get pretty two-dimensional behavior and you get these vortices uh, in the wake. Uh, behind the separation um, and you get turbulent mixing which dissipates kinetic energy and this is a mechanism which leads to ja drag generation. 3D separations on the other hand are caused by sort of surfaces that are angled relative to the flow. So these are things like the A and C pillars on a typical car. Um, these lead to the generation of more or less uh, streamwise vortices, sorry, missing letter there, uh, vortices. Um, and this is sort of shows a flow pattern downstream where you can see those vortices from the C-pillars um, persisting some distance downstream of the vehicle. Also, the internal flow needs this cooling. The flow is for cooling the engine, um, for providing cooling air for the heat exchanger, for the air conditioning system, and to cool the transmission. And you can essentially characterize this cooling system by a pressure loss, um, at lower speeds, a pressure rise through a fan that ensures sufficient flow through the system, and the combination of these two things together essentially governs how much flow is going to go through. 